Hey, it's Tony from Adafruit, and in this video we're going to look at MicroPython and how to use LED backpack displays. So these are really neat little displays, and I'll show you a quick example, like this little matrix display here. So you can see this is a grid of pixels, and we'll see what it looks like when it's lit up. And so uh, each of those pixels can light up and change colors, and so you can draw graphics and things. Uh, there are other types of displays too, so there are things like the seven segment displays, so you've probably seen these in like a digital clock, uh, clock radio, for example, something like that. Really nice, bright, beautiful displays, perfect for showing like a sensor reading or little bits of information. And I'll show you how to use a MicroPython module so that you can use those from your MicroPython code. Really simple and easy if you just want to show like some text or maybe a number on the numeric displays uh, and then set pixels and things on the matrix display so you could like build a game or something like that uh, with it. So let's just kind of dive in and get started and we'll uh, start looking at how to use this library and uh, use these modules with MicroPython boards. So we'll go to the main view real quick. We'll jump to desktop. So there we go. Uh, and of course there's a guide that goes with this video uh, and this guide is not published yet so this will probably be published um, sometime tomorrow so when you're watching this video uh, might not be there yet but look in the YouTube description when this goes up on YouTube there should be a link to the guide on YouTube uh, when it's published up there. And basically the guide it just walks through how to hook up these LED backpacks to a MicroPython board which I conveniently have in the upper right corner here. So this is the uh, SAMD21, the Feather M0 Ada Logger. And so that has the SAMD21 microprocessor, what we've been using a lot for kind of our experimental uh, MicroPython port. Now the Ada Logger version has an SD card. Uh, I'm not actually using it in this sketch, it's just the, uh, the Feather M0 that I had handy here. So that's what we're going to use here. Any Feather M0 could work. Or other MicroPython boards, so like the ESP8266 for example, like this board here, works great with these. Uh, and that's what I show in this guide. I show how to use the SAMD21 and the ESP8266. Uh, but again, everything works across all the MicroPython boards. Uh, with some caveats, uh, which if you go back to some of the previous videos, there are some differences in the board APIs. Uh, but I link to a bunch of MicroPython guides that I've done where I talk through, for example, on the Pi board, how you might use the I2C interface and initialize it in a slightly different way uh, compared to some of the other boards. So, you know, eventually everything's going to work the same across all the boards, but for now things are a little bit different in the MicroPython world. Uh, but we call out the differences in some of these guides. So anyways, uh, this guide, we're going to walk through these LED backpack displays and you might wonder, what are LED backpack displays? Well, I'm glad that you asked. So there's a whole guide that I'll link to in the description uh, when this goes up on YouTube, and it's also linked from the guide that I'm walking through in this video. Uh, but these are basically little displays like these that have LEDs that power them. So, you know, each of these little pixels is an individual LED on here. And same thing with this uh, little numeric display, it's just each of the components of the numbers uh, on here are actually there are seven different LEDs that you can light up individually to make different uh, numeric uh, or different numbers on the displays there. So those are LEDs uh, that drive these. And the nice thing is on the back of these you can see there's this driver chip right here, this Holtec HT16K33 driver chip. And that basically gives you a simple little I2C interface to control all of the LEDs that are on this backpack. So your development board only has to have a clock, a data line, power, and ground to talk to these devices. And this is the Featherwing version. This is the Featherwing, the 16 by 8 matrix, and the seven segment uh, display above here. And so these were made to slot right into the feather boards right here, uh, like that. But we also have breakout board versions, which you can see right here. So this is like a breakout board that you can put on a breadboard. Uh, same thing for like the numeric displays. Uh, there are other types of displays, so there's a 14 segment, so this numeric display like I have right here, this is a 7 segment display because each of the characters can really only show numbers. You can also show hex characters like A through F, but it's really only good for numbers. Uh, there's also a 14 segment display which looks kind of like this and they come in all different kinds of colors. Uh, and this one's kind of nice in that you can actually show characters on this. So you can see like A, B, C, D, you can have like uppercase, lowercase, because it has a lot more segments. So you can see like diagonal segments and internal ones like that. So you can make uh, different characters and things with it. So these three types of displays are basically what we can use with MicroPython. Uh, and we'll kind of walk through how to use a couple examples of these right here uh, with this module. So that's what the LED backpacks are though. So they're basically just a nice little convenient way to get a real bright, beautiful LED display without having to wire up because, you know, on this 16 by 8 matrix, there's a lot of LEDs there. And so you would need a lot of GPIO pins on your development board if you wanted to control all of those. But by just using that little driver chip back here, it 
takes care of driving each of those LEDs. So you just have to have a few lines connected to your development board to make it work. So let's just dive in and we'll get started with this. Uh, hardware wise, we'll just run through the parts that you need for this real fast. So obviously you need a board that's running MicroPython. And I, I talked through and linked to a bunch of the different guides where I show you a bunch of examples. Uh, this guide, I'm showing examples for the ESP8266 and the Feather M0. Uh, but again, any MicroPython board should work with maybe a few caveats to how you initialize I squared C. Uh, then you'll obviously need an LED backpack or feather wing of some sort. So I mentioned uh, the eight by 16 feather wing uh, matrix, this is a great one, or the seven segment, and I don't have an example here, but a 14 segment. Uh, there's also a feather wing version of these. So these are great. They'll just slot right into your board and you're good to go. You don't have to do like any wiring for them. Uh, but again, we do have uh, separate backpacks that are breakouts that you can wire up to different boards. Uh, you could wire them up to a feather also if you wanted. And you can also have multiples of these uh, connected to your development board. So each of these has on the back, you can see these little gold kind of traces right here, kind of to the right of my uh, finger. So those are, you can actually bridge those connections with solder and that will change the I squared C address that this device will show up as. And so as long as each device has a unique I squared C address, and because there's three of them on here, that means that you can get uh, up to uh, eight different values on here. So you can have, you know, a few of these connected uh, to your development board. Uh, and basically, so you, you can have more than one as long as each one has a unique I squared C address. So you could have like this matrix, you could have uh, the seven segment display, you could have 14 segment display, but just make sure to give each one a unique address on here. Now it's gonna be hard with the feather wings just because you can really just fit one on here. Uh, we do have the doubler, so you can have like two feather things connected side by side. Uh, but if you're connecting a bunch of these, you probably want the breakout versions because then you can put them all you know, in a specific spot for it. Uh, okay, so that's what you need for the uh, the actual backpack. And then there's really nothing else. Uh, if you're using the breakout, you'll need a breadboard and some jumper uh, wires to make the connections and some soldering tools. Obviously, there's some headers on here you have to solder and the actual LED matrices you have to solder onto here. Um, it's not too complex. You know, if you're a total beginner, check out the guide to excellent soldering that will just give you some tips and some pointers and, and practice a little bit, you know, try some, don't make this the very first thing you solder, uh, you know, try out a, a few little simple things before you do this. Uh, okay, the wiring, super easy for the feathers. Uh, actually here, well, maybe we'll start with the matrix. So to use this with the feather, obviously you just plug the feather right in. So I'm gonna do that right now. So I will just connect it and we're almost good to go on that one. So we'll, we'll come back and look at the software in a second. Um, I also show though, if you're using the breakouts, this little uh, diagram shows how you connect them. So you really just need the clock line, the data line, and then ground and power connected to all of these. And I'm showing 3.3 volt power, but I mentioned read the LED backpack guide because some of these backpacks, like we have a large 1.2 inch uh, seven segment display, that needs five volts of power. And these little feathers run off of 3.3 volts, unless you have them connected to USB, in which case you can get five volts from the USB port. So it gets a little complicated. Uh, make sure to read the guide though and see most of them run off of 3.3 volts. Uh, some of them run and will be a little bit dimmer when they're on 3.3 volts versus if they're on five volts. Uh, so, you know, again, read the guide. It kind of explains uh, the best way to power each of those. So, okay, so that's connected now. The feathers are pretty easy. We just plug it in and let's go to uh, the software for this. So if you've seen any of the other, mic uh, any of the other MicroPython videos, this is gonna be very similar. Uh, so you need to download these .mpy files and put them on your MicroPython board. And make sure to read this guide because if you're using like the ESP8266, you wanna use version 1.8.5 or higher because that has support for these external .mpy files. Uh, in general, you probably wanna be using the latest version of your MicroPython firmware for your board. Uh, and then you wanna go to this Adafruit or MicroPython Adafruit HT16K33 repository. This is a GitHub repository. This is the source code for it. So if you're curious, you can look at the source code and see how this is implemented. Uh, but in the release tab is where you wanna go. And we have these pre-made.mpy versions of the files. And uh oh, my cat's gonna jump up. So there, there we go, we have a, a little, uh, little visitor here to check out the LED backpacks. But anyways, uh, you wanna grab these .mpy files and download them uh, to your computer. And then you just wanna copy them to your board. So I'm using the Feather M0 with the SAMD21 MicroPython. The cool thing about that is that it shows up as a 
uh, a board as a uh, USB drive here. So I've got a USB drive and ahead of time I already copied over these .mpy files here. Uh, so you can see they're on my board. If you don't have, if your board doesn't show up as a USB device, just use a, um, uh, the tool like Ampy. And I mentioned in the guide how to do that. And I can see my cat is trying to get into trouble here. We'll see if, uh, if I can show you. <laughs> you might be able to see she is trying to climb up and, uh, and reach. Uh, there's like some tape or something up there I think she wants. But hey, I think it looks like she got bored. So that, that's what cats do. Uh, anyways, though, so uh, you want to copy these files to your board in the root of your board. So I've, I've done this using the USB drive, uh, and then you know you can use Ampy or a tool like that if you wanna copy files if, you, if your board doesn't show up as a USB drive. Okay, so we've got the files on the board. Now let's go to the serial REPL. So I'm just gonna open up the serial terminal. And again, in the guide, uh, we'll go back to the guide. I mentioned, you know, if you're not familiar with MicroPython and stuff, uh, like I said, in, there's in the overview page, I link to the what is MicroPython guide and all there's a whole category of MicroPython guides. Start there, don't dive into this guide just yet. But if you are kind of unsure, uh, this, this little link right here will tell you how to get to the serial REPL and start connecting to your MicroPython board and uh, running commands and things interactively. So that's what we're gonna do right here. So I'm gonna connect to my serial REPL. So on a Mac, uh, this board shows up as this USB modem device. I'm gonna use the screen command, which opens up a serial connection. And then it's 115200 baud that I wanna use uh, to connect to this board. And so now I'm connected to the serial REPL. And let's get started. So we'll dive into the usage. The very first thing you have to do is initialize I squared C. So again, these backpacks use the I squared C bus. And to do that, uh, you just have some pretty standard kind of boilerplate code that you've probably seen a bunch of times in these MicroPython videos. But we'll import the machine module. Uh, and then for the SAMD21 board, uh, this is how you create the I squared C instance. You use the machine.I squared C class and pass it an instance of the SCL clock pin uh, and then an instance of the SDA, oops, SDA data line pin. And those are uh, specified as strings. On different boards like the ESPA266, you might need to use numbers uh, on here. And then right now on the SAMD21 port, you have to call this init function. Uh, we're actually gonna get rid of that pretty soon. So in the future, you won't have to call init. Uh, but for now, uh, make sure to call it. Uh, and if you get an error that init doesn't exist, then you're using a later version of the firmware and everything's good and don't worry about it. Uh, and then for the ESP8266, this is just a different way to initialize the I2C bus. Again, it identifies pins based on a number instead of um, using a string. So look at your board documentation. I link to the MicroPython I squared C guide where this talks through for each board how to initialize I squared C. So look for that if you're using a different board. And then let's get started. So the LED matrix, uh, it's pretty simple. There's the HT16K33. Uh, actually, this is a typo right here. And let's edit this on the fly. Well, you'll watch uh, some live learn system editing right here. So you actually want to import the HT16K33 matrix module uh, inside of here. So, okay, so import this HT16K33 underscore matrix module. And then inside of there are a few different classes that you can use. Uh, and again, I see another typo, so we will fix this on the fly. Some amount of extra space got in there, so there we go. Uh, okay, so let's import that. So we'll import the HT16K33 underscore matrix module. Uh, and if you get an error at this point, then something went wrong with copying those .mpy files to your board. So go back, check to make sure those files are there. Uh, you know, it's probably not there if, if this import fails. And at this point, now I just need to create an instance of a matrix object. So on this class, or on, on this module rather, uh, there's the HT16K33. And you might wonder like, what is that weird name? Again, that's the chip that drives this thing, the Holtec HT16K33. So right now, a lot of our MicroPython modules are a little bit low level and just deal with like the driver chips and things that, uh, that they uh, use. Okay, so in that module, the matrix module, there are a few different classes. There's the one I'm gonna use, the matrix 16, uh, 16 by eight class. And so that's because this matrix is 16 pixels across and eight pixels up. It's basically each of the individual matrices is an eight by eight matrix. And then this one has just two of those matrices next to each other on here. So it's a 16 by eight total size matrix. But in this guide I mentioned, so we have an eight by eight version. Uh, oops, uh oh, I'm, I don't wanna edit this. Uh, I have an eight by eight version. That's if you just have a single eight by eight, that's on the breakout. Uh, we don't have a feather wing version of that. The 16 by eight, that's what I'm using. And then there's the eight by eight by two. 
And so that one is actually, there's a special breakout. The, it's called the bi-color 8x8 eight eight matrix. And this is a two color matrix. So most of these matrices are a single color. You can see on this right hand column here, uh, links to all the different matrices. And so, you know, every color uh, is pretty much represented here. But this one right here is kind of special, this bicolor LED matrix, in that each of the little squares on it has two LEDs inside of it. There's a green LED and a red LED, and you can control one each individually. So you can have a green color, a red color, or put both on and you get a yellow color for it. So you get like three different colors, or I guess four if you consider off a color for it. So that's kind of cool, but you have to use this matrix eight by eight by two class to get that functionality. So again, pick the right class uh, for what you're using here. And then uh, you create an instance of this class, just like I'm doing, you have to pass in the I squared C interface that we created before. So I'm gonna pass that in as a parameter to the initializer. Uh, and so I'm gonna do that and then you see something crazy happens here and we'll come back to this, don't worry. Uh, but then just one thing to note, if you did change the address of your device by you know change, soldering those little, uh, those little pads closed and, and changing the I squared C address, there's a syntax right here. You can see this address equals uh, OX74. So you can pass in an address parameter if you've changed it. Uh, and like if you're using multiple backpacks, for example. Okay, so when this initializes, by default, the library just turns on the display and you'll probably get some random values like this because it's just showing whatever was currently in the memory for the display, which is probably noise or junk data. Uh, but we can start calling some functions to clear the display and control and like write the pixels. And it's really easy. So uh, on the matrix class or object that's created, you can use the fill function and you just send a color. And for these single color matrices, you can specify zero to, to turn everything off or one to turn everything on. So let's say zero. Now I did that and nothing happened. And that's because you have to call this show function. And you see that's a lot where basically uh, all these operations will operate on memory and then you call show to take that memory and push it out to the display and actually change the hardware. So watch when I press enter, everything turned off because we basically told the display, okay, here's your new frame buffer of data and it's a bunch of just zero pixel, you know, off data, so turn everything off. And if I wanna turn everything on, I can just run that fill function with a one value. And again, I have to call show to be able to see the results. And so cool, everything turns on uh, just like you expect. So pretty simple, pretty easy to just clear the display like that. Uh, and so I'll turn it all off again. And then for the matrix, uh, you can use, there's a pixel function. And so with the pixel function, you can choose the X and the Y location to turn on or off a pixel. So let's try that. We'll say matrix.pixel and let's say zero, zero. Let's just see the origin or like, you know, the very first pixel. And then the color value, we want to say one to turn it on. And so we'll do that and we'll say matrix.show. And cool, so you can see there's pixel zero, zero. Uh, and so if you're curious, then the pixels go across, there's 16 across. So the very last column, uh, since the first one is column zero, the last column is gonna be column 15. So that's your X position. And then your Y position is your up and down. And so this top one up here is, is Y position zero. The bottom one down here is Y position one. So if I wanna turn on the complete opposite pixel, then uh, maybe try to guess what you think this should be. So it should probably be 15 and then seven and then a value one. And so then we'll say show and cool. There we see, we turn on that pixel there. Uh, so that's pretty easy uh, to you know turn on pixel. Then you can turn off pixels. So if I wanna turn that pixel off, then I can just set it to color zero. And again, I have to do show to, uh, to make it work. But you can see the other pixel still stays lit because until I turn it off or, or clear the display, it's still gonna be uh, set in the memory and, and stay on like that. So that's cool, that's pretty easy. You can set pixels. Now, unfortunately, that's all the drawing uh, drawing commands that are available right now. So you don't have like lines and circles and text and stuff like that yet. Uh, that's coming soon. So eventually we'll have some of that for all of these libraries. Um, but for now, you basically get some of these uh, raw pixel commands. So you know, you'll need to maybe implement some things yourself. Uh, but you can still do some cool effects and animations and things like that. Uh, like uh, just last night, Lady Ada did a cool little uh, Game of Life Periscope demo. So go to the YouTube channel uh, and you can see little demo of that and you could do a game of life one here because this is just a matrix of pixels and the game of life is basically uh this kind of cellular automata uh i don't know it's not really a game it's more of like a demonstration but it's uh there's basically a convention where uh each each pixel represents a life form and a life form can only live if some number of pixels near it exist uh, and then if and each step of the game looks at okay how many pixels are turned on 
and uh, like life forms can reproduce if there are more pixels near them than other pixels to turn on. Got some really neat rules. But uh, the end result is, you know, do a Google search for Game of Life. Uh, John Conway, a very famous mathematician, created it. And it's really neat. You can make these really beautiful pieces of art almost where it's just really cool changing displays. And then people went into the whole theory of cellular automata and like, figured out that like you can represent like the universe just with those simple rules apparently. So uh, really cool stuff, which you could build on a feather in MicroPython here. And you could see Lady Ada do it on, uh, on Periscope with NeoPixels. So, okay, so that's the basics of the matrix. Um, uh, the, 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 we've entered the matrix now. Uh, I wanna show one other thing with this matrix display though. So let me fill it with all pixels turned on and we'll say matrix.show. And there's a cool thing you can do. So there, you can actually change the brightness and control some of the blinking of this. And you might see in this video, it looks like it's flickering. Um, that's just because these LEDs update at a certain refresh rate and my camera has a refresh rate. So, you know, in practice, when I look at this with my eyes, I don't see any flickering at all. So, you know, just be aware you're, that's some weird artifacts from the camera that you're seeing there. Uh, but anyway, so the brightness you can change. There's a brightness function. So we'll say matrix.brightness. And this takes a value from zero to 15. And so a value of zero means the lowest brightness. And you can actually see it immediately updates. You don't have to call show. So it just will instantly change the display. And it just dropped down. It doesn't turn completely off, but it's noticeably dimmer. Uh, and then if I want, you know, I can say like a brightness of five, so a little bit brighter. And then let's go all the way up to the max, 15. And so that's, you know, as bright as you can get with it. So kind of nice, you know, you get 16 levels of brightness, so you can adjust things uh, to be a little more intense or less intense. Uh, and then you can also blink this. So there's a blink rate function. And this takes uh, a value between zero and three. So I'll say matrix.blink underscore rate. And a value of zero means no blinking. So what it's doing right now, let's do a value of one. And so this is actually a fast blink. And so it'll just turn every pixel on and off uh, pretty quickly. It looks like once every half second or so. Uh, and then you can do a value two and this slows it down a little bit. So this is like maybe once, I don't know, a second almost. And then a value of three is even slower. It's like once every two seconds or so. And then you can go back to value zero and that'll just be full on. It won't blink anymore. So that's kind of cool and handy to know. Uh, and these brightness and blink functions, we'll come back to these because you can use these on the seven segment and the 14 segment display also. So uh, that's kind of handy. You can blink any of these uh, boards like that. So, okay, so that's it for the matrix. You know, again, you've got the basic pixel commands uh, right now. And then in the future, keep your eyes peeled. We'll probably have uh, like some text and stuff like that that you can use to, to write to the board. So, okay, so let's go on and let's use the next thing. Let's use the seven segment display right here. So we'll jump into that. I'm gonna close out of the REPL just because I'm gonna disconnect the board. I'm gonna pull off the feather wing here. Let me just gently pull that out. There we go. And then I'm gonna connect this one right here. This is the seven segment feather wing. Um, I think this is a red color if I remember correctly. So super easy. I'm just gonna plug this into the feather board like that and we are pretty much good to go. And then I'll plug it in. And okay, so let's connect to our REPL again. Uh, and again, um, you know, I've, this board started up from scratch, so I have to initialize I squared C again. So import machine, I squared C equals machine dot I squared C, and we'll use machine dot pin SCL and machine dot pin SDA, uh, and then I two C dot init. Again, this is all the uh, Feather M zero MicroPython how to initialize I squared C. Okay, and then now we want to import a slightly different module. So we want to import from the HT16K33 underscore segment module. So this one right here. And so this module has the code for the seven segment and the 14 segment display uh, built into it. So let's do that. And this shows an example of how to create. It's just like creating the matrix, uh, but there's a different class. So there's the seg seven by four class that we wanna use here because that's a seven segment display with four characters across it like this. So let's import the HT16K33 underscore seg module. And then we'll say my display equals the HT16K33 underscore seg. Uh, <laughs> rolls off the tongue very nicely. And then seg seven by four module. And again, this takes a single parameter. You need to pass in the I squared C bus that was initialized before. And you can also pass in an optional address. If you've changed the address, again, you could put it in here like OX74 or something like that. Uh, but in this case, I'm using the default, so I don't need to change anything. So I do that. Again, you see some weird random noise, um, 
But just like the matrix display, this has a fill function. So you can say display.fill0 and then display.show and you'll turn everything off. So that's a good way to clear the display. Again, you get that because when it starts up, the memory just has random values and you're just getting kind of blasted out. Here's what was last kind of in the display or whatever noise was there. Um, okay, so for this display, you probably want to use um, this put character function. Uh, and I'll show you there are actually some simpler functions too you can use. But if you just want to control each of these characters individually, the put function is what you want to use. And so you call display.put it takes a character, and even though this is a numeric display, you still have to send these as strings. So if I want to show the character 1, for example, I need to send it as a string. And then you want to send the position. So position 0, 1, 2, or 3 is where this character can go. So let's say position 0. We'll say that. Uh, and again, nothing shows up because you have to call display.show. And then there you go. There's a 1. And this is actually upside down. So we'll move it around just like this. And let me just put something heavy on there to hold that down. Oh, uh oh, I just reset my uh, my serial connection there, so that that might be bad. I think I just angered the board. We'll have to reconnect to uh, to get that to show. Okay, so let's reconnect. And actually, let me just scoot this more into the view of the camera. There we go. Okay, so let's reconnect. Oh, and for some reason, if you're on Mac OS X, uh, the screen command whenever it exits in a bad way, if like the board is unplugged it just breaks your terminal session. So you just have to open a new tab I found to make this work. Um, okay, and then for some reason it expands my tab, my window to be massive. So let's make that smaller. Uh, okay, so now let's reconnect with screen. Uh, and actually I should, oh, no, that was a different thing. Let's screen dev TTY USB modem. Okay, sorry, so we got to do this um, machine I squared C thing again. Machine.i squared c, oops, i squared c, machine.pin. And this is just because the board reset uh, because I was moving around the cable. And this is probably not the best USB cable in the world because, you know, it's resetting. I'm going to see if I can get that up. There we go. This plays there. Okay, so let me just go through this boilerplate again real fast. Say SDA, i2c.init, and then import that HT16K33 segment module. And then display equals HT16K33 segment dot seg74 and I squared C. Okay, cool. And then uh, that's kind of funny. Uh, you notice that it, it just loaded right up because this was the last thing in display memory. Uh, so, you know, the power must have still been connected, but I reset the board on accident. So, okay, so now let's just let's clear the display. So we'll say fill zero and then display dot show. And now let's put a character again. Uh, so display.put, let's put the character one in position zero. Let's put another character. So let's do display.put uh, the character, how about nine in position one? Uh, and then uh, how about, let's say display.put, and you can actually put a hex character in here if you want. So I could say like the character A uh, in here, and you can go A through F basically, so you can display a hex value. And let's put that in position two. And then how about display not put uh, B in position three. So now let's call display.show. And there we go. So you see 19AB uh, on this display. So that's kind of cool. Uh, you know, probably good for displaying numbers, obviously. You're not going to display a lot of text on this. Uh, you know, anything A through F you could spell out, though. So, OK, so that's handy. This is good, you know, if you know you want to put numbers in a specific spot. Um, and then there are also a few special things you can do. So you can say display.put and then a colon like this. And you don't actually have to specify a position for this. It knows that there's only a single colon in the middle here. And then if I do display uh, oops, display.show, you'll see the colon turns on, those two little dots in the middle there. So that's kind of handy. Um, you can also turn on a dot or a decimal point, and you can specify the position because there are four of them on here. So let's say position one, uh, we'll turn that on. And now if I display dot show, you can see uh, turned on, it's right below the colon right there. So there's a way to put a, a dot, and you can put up to four of them on here. Uh, now if you want to clear that colon, uh, you actually can't clear it by calling a function. You have to call display.fill0 again and just clear the whole display. You can clear the colon, or the dot, uh, the decimal point rather, if you just put a character in position two, or in the position that it was before. If you put another character there, it's gonna erase the dot. So let me show you, like, we display dot put nine in position one. If I do that again, 
the decimal point's going to turn off after I do show. So see it turned off. Uh, so that's basically because every time you put a character, it changes the memory for that position. And the decimal point is a part of that memory for that position. And so unless you turn it on with the display dot put with a dot, it's going to turn off the next time you put a character there. So just be aware of that if you're trying to put uh, decimal points on here. Uh, and then, like I said, to turn off that colon, we basically have to fill the whole display with zero again uh, and then show it. So there's no turn off yet. Maybe in the future we might uh, add something to the library for that. Um, okay, so there's that. And then you probably really just want to display a number on this. You don't want to have to go character by character for this. So there's a nice little convenient function for that. You can say display dot number and let's say like 42, for example, and then display dot show. And look at that 42.00 uh, for this. So basically what this tries to do is just fill the display with as much precision as it can get. So, you know, there's only two characters in the front and so it'll show two decimal points after it, um, you know, but you could show a value up to like, how about 999? Uh, 9999, like, you know, almost a thousand or uh, what? Well, actually almost 10,000. So if I show this now you see, oh, that's, ah, that's, that seems like a bug to me. Display.number9999 shows 9998. Huh, we'll have to, to look into that one. It looks like it's some kind of a rounding error in here. That's uh, that's kind of funny for this. So uh, interesting thing to try out here. Let's try like 9997. Let's see what this does uh, for that. Okay, that works. Interesting that that, that, uh, that has some kind of a rounding error here that seems to uh, to cause a problem here. This is a good uh, good live uh, example of, uh, of finding issues here. So right, let's take a look at the code and see why that might be happening. I'm genuinely curious. So let's look at the code for the seven segment display. So you can actually see the number function is implemented right here. And it's on this base class. It's a little interesting how this module is implemented. There's a 14 by four, and that's actually the, the, uh, the 14 segment display. That's kind of the main class. And then the seven segment inherits from it and then just fills in a few different implementations uh, of like where it can put characters. But then because it inherits from the 14 segment display, it gets this number function for free. So that's kind of nice uh, to have. So, okay, so it looks like what it's what's happening here. So this line is converting whatever number you give to a floating point representation of it. And then if it's greater than four characters long, it's looking for where the decimal point is. And then if, if it finds that it's after four characters, then it's just, it, it's gonna fail at this point. So again, like you can't show a value of like 1.729836 or something, you know, it's, it's not gonna fit. You only have four characters on here. So, okay, so that's interesting. Um, and then it goes through and it will, uh, it turns everything off and then it just puts the dot, uh, let's see, if, if there's a decimal place in here, it's gonna add an extra place. Interesting how this is, is working. So then it uses the text function. So, so, okay, so our rounding error must be happening right here for some reason. So I'm gonna have to look at this later. This is, this is interesting why this, uh, this bug occurred, but uh, you know, a little interesting deep dive into uh, the Python code here. So, you know, there's probably something with this format, floating point fl uh, format here that, you know, maybe uh, it's, it's rounding for some reason when it, when it really shouldn't be here. So interesting that this happened. I'll, I'll look at this later. Hey, it's live internet, anything can happen here. So, okay, so that's the basics of the number function. There's also a hex function. So you can say display.hex. And this just takes a hex value. So, and it can actually be a, a numeric value. So I can say like the, hex, uh, the decimal value 100. And then if I display.show that, you can see that's hex value 64. Uh, but you can also send in a hex value if you want. So like OX, how about feed? Uh, Cause my cat's right behind me right there and she's probably hungry. Uh, we'll say display.show. So there you go, there's feed uh, across there. So simple, easy, good way to show hex values. So you can show uh, much larger ranges of values because with hex, you're gonna have you know more, uh, more values that you can show with those four characters on here. So handy thing to have uh, around that you can use to display something. Although not easy for a human to read. You know, if I'm looking at the value F-E-E-D, I'm not able to turn that into a number very easily, but you can use Python to do it. You can use MicroPython actually. If I do O-X F-E-E-D, that's gonna show me that's the decimal value 65 to 61. So there you go. Just always have a MicroPython board handy that, you know, MicroPython calculator, hey, that would be a fun project idea. You know, you've got, use a couple of these backpacks to have a nice numeric display 
get a little keypad below it, and then uh, have a little MicroPython board that lets you uh, use it there. So hey, interesting thing. Or you could use the 14 segment display and then you know have a couple of those next to each other and maybe have like a line of REPL input that you're typing on here. So maybe fun future project to play with. Um, okay, so hex number, those are the interesting functions that you'll wanna use on this display. Uh, and then I don't have an example to show for it right now, but the 14 segment display, it's just like the seven segment display. It's just that it can display uh, any kind of alphanumeric character on here. So you can display act like text across the display. And I show how to use it in the guide, very similar to the seven x four. You just use the seg 14 x four class. Uh, it has the exact same functions. There's put and show, fill, uh, but there's also a text function. And so you can call display.text right here and this will uh, let you write a string of text and only up to four characters, so you can't go crazy with it, but you can sh uh, show those characters on here on the display. And also, both of these displays, uh, the 14 and the seven segment, have that brightness and blink function. So I'll, I'll show that again. I can say display.brightness zero, and you know, it gets a lot dimmer, and I can say display.blink rate, and let's say blink rate of three, a fast blink, and so you can see that it's our slow blink rather. So this is kind of the slow blink. And then a blink rate of one is kind of a fast blink for it. So, you know, that's kind of cool, kind of handy thing. Like if you need to get someone's attention, say, hey, warning, danger, something's wrong, uh, easy way to do it. And then you can turn off the blinking with a blink rate of zero. So, okay, cool. So that's really it for these LED matrix uh, and LED segment displays. So again, these are these LED backpack displays. They come in nice little feather wing form factors, but they're also uh, standalone breakout boards that you can get uh, for these and connect them up to your MicroPython board. And you can see this MicroPython module is pretty simple to use. Uh, you know, there's not a lot of drawing stuff in here. Like, so for these matrices, um, you know, you're gonna have to do a little bit of work to get some graphics and things on them right now, but that's kind of the fun of it right now. In the future, I imagine we'll probably have a graphics library that'll do things like line drawing. Uh, the Arduino, you know, you can use these with Arduino, obviously. So if you load an Arduino sketch onto this board, um, it can control these in Arduino. And we have this whole library called GFX that gives you a lot of graphical effects. And so that has like line drawing and stuff. And we're thinking about getting a port of that to the uh, MicroPython world so that we'll have a good way to do that with uh, our boards in MicroPython. But anyways, that's it for this guide. So again, I just wanted to run through this guide that shows how to use these. Uh, this will be a little quick video here. There's a bug that I need to go investigate, obviously, in this uh, in this library, so that'll be kind of fun to look at. Or hey, maybe take a look. Uh, if I don't have time to do it, send a pull request and see if you can figure out why it's uh, doing the rounding from 9999 to uh, 9998. So anyways, though, uh, let's see. I, I don't think there are a lot of folks watching right now because it's a little bit late, a little bit later than normal, but uh, sometimes that's how I roll here. And I'll jump to the main view. And if anyone has questions, I'll throw them into the chat. But otherwise, I think I'll wrap this up. So, you know, again, this was the LED backpack and feather wing guide with MicroPython. So we showed how to use these neat little displays, you know, like this matrix display and the seven segment and 14 segment display with MicroPython. So real easy, you just load the MicroPython module and then from the REPL, you can just interactively start coding against this uh, module and start controlling these LED displays. So these are great for displaying like a sensor reading, um, maybe some kind of a number, the little, uh, the 14 segment display, you can display text. You can maybe scroll some text across it, for example, like a Twitter feed or something, you know, some fun IoT projects or things like that could be possible with it. So uh, anyways, I'll wrap this up then. So check out youtube.com slash Adafruit. That's where you'll see this video up there. And once this video goes up, uh, the link to this guide should be active. So I'll wait to publish this video until the guide is published uh, with it. So look for it uh, tomorrow, which will be Wednesday, November 2nd, actually, 2016. So that's when this is... Uh, this should be out there. Uh, but anyways, yeah, check out YouTube. If you like MicroPython, we have plenty of other MicroPython videos and things on there. Uh, check out also uh, learn.adafruit.com slash category slash MicroPython. That's where I have links to all of the guides. I think we're up to like probably 15 or 16. Um, well, actually, I'm on the, I don't have my desktop open anymore, but there are quite a few guides out there. So lots of things. Uh, we're going through all the different feather wings so far. So I've done like the motor driver, uh, let's see, what other feather wings did I do? Boy, I'm just drawing a complete blank on this. Well, hey, obviously we've done the LED matrix uh, and LED backpacks here. So if there's a feather wing that you like, uh, stay tuned. It will probably have a MicroPython driver. Well, it already has a driver very likely, but it'll have a video and a guide to go with it pretty soon. 
Uh, if you like to watch these videos live, check out twitch.tv slash Adafruit. That's where I stream things live. I like to do a stream on Tuesdays and on Fridays. Although this week, uh, Friday, I'm actually going to be gone. I'm going down to Los Angeles for the Hackaday Super Conference in Pasadena. So I'll be down there. If you're out there, uh, maybe come and say hi to me uh, out at the conference there. But I'll be gone. So no video Friday, but I'm going to try and do one tomorrow on Wednesday. We'll see if I can sneak one in. Uh, potentially. I'm not sure. The schedule is a little hectic, though, so we'll see how things go for this. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, stay tuned for lots of regular MicroPython and other fun projects and content from Adafruit. So if you like this video, if you got a lot of good info from this, if this is helpful and useful, you know, click the like, the comment, uh, the subscribe buttons, and let us know that this is good stuff, and we'll keep doing it. So until next time, this is Tony from Adafruit. Thanks for watching. Bye.